like to share. Uh, one is an interesting um, conversation, right? My son was four years old or five years old and in a school that he was going, um, the teacher uh, wrote to me saying that he was having some problem with mathematics. And she called me and I went for a meeting. And, um, you know, she said that he asked some odd questions. I think he was a little older, not four or five, sorry, about six, seven years old. And uh, he asked certain odd questions, maybe when I think some algebra was being introduced or something else was being introduced. And um, so I said, okay, um, you know, why do you feel they're odd questions? They may be just out of curiosity, right? So instead of saying X and Y, if he asked, uh, why can't it be G and F? Uh, which I thought, uh, not being a maths person, but I thought it was a valid question to ask, right? Yeah. And then I, I told him that, you know, he plays a lot of instruments and I see that he's able to create a lot of interesting patterns when he's playing those instruments. What would you say about that? And she said, oh, you know, Vibisha, we do music with our heart and we do mathematics with our mind. Um, I'm just sharing this, uh, not because I want to undermine the teacher. She was a wonderful person and she really helped my son. But these are certain misconceptions that I think we live with, right? Uh, music comes from the heart, dance comes from the heart. You don't use your mind to create. Uh, the other thing that is very interesting, and I remember reading somewhere um, uh, when, you know, Pablo Picasso talks about, you know, when we talk about an artist, what do we think of an artist as, you know, as part of larger society, do we think of an artist like a painter is someone who just has eyes and therefore he paints or someone has a ear and therefore he or she is a musician? Um, I think the point that he tries to make is that every artist or every person is a kind of political being, right? And uh, we are, as artists, I think everyone is constantly alert to the heart-rending things that are happening, the burning things that are happening, the happy things that are happening, and molding oneself, uh, you know, to that likeness. So I think, you know, a lot of our problems of how we think about art, and therefore art in education itself rises from a lot of our misconceptions. So that's my, um, and I'm, I'm sharing that out of experience of talking to people. Coming to the more specific question, and I think what Devyani and Pratibhaji were all saying, you know, I see the artist role and what can the student learn from an artist? Uh, so many things. I think the artist role, firstly, as an educator, if I look at it, I think because an artist is primarily through a lot of discussions and exchange of ideas and experiences is actually co-constructing, you know, co-constructing and that's the kind of learning that's taking place in the classroom. Um, and therefore, the, the, even the artist is providing for a experiencing learning process, right? So because the artist is not someone who is coming with as a, um, you know, as an expert, uh, but the, the approach of the artist, the process that I think Pratibhaji was also talking about, which is so important, Artist as an educator comes as a co-creator, as a co-constructor. And I think that is very important and special and that allows for a lot of learning and that's how children would learn. But I also feel that artists um, as collaborators, you know, like uh, Devyani was saying, 21st century school uh, education, very, very cliche. But I truly believe that artists come as collaborators. They have a great sense of how people can work together and they actually make that happen in whether it's in a classroom or outside the classroom, that kind of collaborative process happens. And therefore, you know, that, that becomes a real experience through which children learn. Um, the other thing I feel that children can significantly learn, of course, Pratibhaji is a role model, right? So uh, the artist engages with students as a mentor or as a role model. Um, and therefore there is, First, she, she probably does it through her own practice, right? So she's, she's a practicing artist, and I think that is so important. Second, by demonstrating, I think, their own particular methods and um, critical and creative approaches that they have to the art form. That becomes so significant for a, for a learner, whether that's a child or an older. So I think that's another thing that a student gets to learn. Uh, the third thing, I think, by just 
kind of embodying the um, concept of an artist. And when I say an artist, I just want to clarify. I think we are, many of us are just performers. Yeah, Pratibha ji is an artist. Um, today we lost another very well-known artist, uh, Pandit Devi Choudhury, we lost him. Artist, right? Pandit Rajan Chajan Mishra, all artists. So I think that is what we are talking about. They embody being an artist and they live their life. So certainly a child who's experiencing an artist role model becomes such an important. All of us have grown with so many uh, role models. Um, the other thing, the two other things which I feel are so significant that a child gets to experience and learn is that, you know, an artist is also a social activist, according to me, because the, um, you know, artists consider that they have a responsibility towards, um, you know, the social and the sort of political issues that are happening. They're expressing and reacting or responding to that. So students see artists as social activists. And last, but you know, not the least is I think, um, you know, an artist has, an artist always has skills um, and knowledge that has come to them through certain research, you know? So students see artists in process, in continuity, and see them as researchers and inquirers. And, um, you know, while we're talking about the NEP, there's so much talk about the inquiry-based learning. I think what better way but to have an artist as a, as a teacher, because then you see the entire inquiry-based learning happening and what gets produced, um, you know, whether it's a painting, whether it's music, or whether it is just an experience. Um, I think children get to understand that process of inquiry. So among Thank many you. things, these are few things that I could yeah. think of. Uh, you know, the connection between leadership and art has been made many, many times over. So it's not something uh, that is new. Um, and usually it's kind of singled out, I think, because uh, of certain properties or elements that are characteristics of arts. For example, uh, you know, you say a classical musician, a, a classical uh, musician is able to create by improvising, right? Uh, so the, and I think the analogies uh, are quite compelling between a leader and, you know, a leader in any sphere and art. Um, but having said that, um, I think, you know, very frankly speaking, again, the same point, the same attributes that distinguishes a great artist, you know, an artist like Pratibhaji and many others from a performer or a mediocre um, and again, not trying to be judgmental, but I'm just trying to make that distinction is exactly what is the distinguishing factor between an exceptional leader and the sort of ordinary counterparts, right? So yeah. uh, I think what the arts do as a process um, in building the leadership are exactly the same thing that an artist does. You know, I think it requires a lot of courage uh, to be able to write a poem, uh, you know, uh, create something, sing a song, go up on stage and sing or dance. It, it's, it's an act of courage. And I think every leader also has to have that act of courage. So while I'm talking about these characteristics, I think the same characteristics hold. So when we go through a art learning process, therefore we also develop courage. I think the second thing that happens is the openness to different perspectives, right? So um, even a good leader will always look at many perspectives before coming to a certain decision or, you know, making a certain choice, will be very open to perspectives which he or she may not otherwise agree to. Again, the art process itself is about open, being open to multiple perspectives. Um, the third thing is, of course, you know, the most obvious. So creativity helps in problem solving. I think the other side of creativity, I think, cannot be limited to looking at just that I dance or I sing. And this brings me to a beautiful, um, you know, sharing that uh, I was working with the government school children in Delhi. And uh, this principal once, you know, he gave me a group of children and he said, uh, you know, these children have all failed in their exams. Uh, see what you can do with them. Um, I felt very bad at that point, but it was, uh, it was, I also felt it was an opportunity. And after going through a certain process of, um, you know, working with them around stories, their stories, and making films out of their stories, 
There's a girl who at the last class, uh, I asked her, what did you learn through this time? What are the new things that you learned? And she told me that she had learned art. So I said, uh, this is a word you knew. You were drawing and painting. What happened? What new happened? And she said, nahi, abhi tak na mujhe art lagta tha ki khali drawing or painting hi hai. Abhi mujhe lagta hai ki agar main apna koi problem solve kar loo, to wo bhi art, art, art hai. Yeah. And for me, that's hugely telling, I think. That, yeah, yeah. you know, um, so therefore, I think uh, being a part of a creative process with, with an artist or an art educator encourages and builds those skills of being able to uh, problem solve. Um, I think art is a great space for practicing mindfulness. Uh, you know, that is something. And again, leadership is about mindfulness. It's about self-awareness. Like I think Pratibha ji said, no, I mean, you don't even think before you ask that, uh, where do you dance? It's a total lack of uh, awareness. You know, I may not know. Not knowing is not a fault. But not being aware and being, you know, not being able to know when to ask, what to ask, what kind of language. I think that's a total lack of awareness. So art practice, I think, builds a lot of mindfulness and self-awareness. Um, also, uh, you know, Pratibha ji, I keep saying this because I think nobody can learn how to dance like her overnight or paint overnight, right? So, uh, you know, being able to practice and a deliberate sort of practice of a skill and a rigor and doing that every single day. Um, I think that is about leadership as well, to be able to, um, you know, hone that and continuously practice. Again, I think through any kind of art practice, children learn and develop rigor, uh, which I think is incredible. And last, but I think the most important is, you know, art is like experiencing the joy of life. And if, if that is something that is not there in children's education, why should children want to go to school? They go to school because they want to meet their friends. Um, yes, yes, they want yes. to participate in a competition. They want to draw, they want to paint, they want to play. They want to play without a purpose, you know? It's not yeah. always that you must have something that is on your mind. You want to yeah. just play an instrument. You want to express. So exactly. I think that is where I see the entire connection between leadership and creative practice and art practice.